God prepares us to be tried and true, pure and holy sanctuaries. And with thanksgiving to the Holy One, we live as spirit-filled, healed and transformed sanctuaries just for God. As we gather before God today, our wonderful and magnificent God, ask God to show up to you and in you as God did to Moses on Mount Sinai. Ask God to speak to you in ways that illuminate your darkness and enliven your steps. Petition God to come alive in you, to call each of us by name and give us the commandments of new life that will order our steps in this time of worship as we even leave this space. God can move our hearts closer to God and center our thoughts on worship. Won't you ask God today to find you? Whether on bended knees, seated, standing, in your kitchen, in your living room, and transform you into the image of perfect love, creating in you a clean heart and renewing in you a right spirit. Lord, prepare us, prepare me to be a sanctuary. morning, my Roberts family. On this Sunday in Lent, we greet you, and these are the morning announcements. Tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., the Staff Parish Committee will meet at 7 p.m. via Zoom. United Methodist Women Unit meeting is uh, March the 20th at 11 a.m. via Zoom. Please check with our president, Mr. Debbie Turner, for additional information on that. Greetings. I am Joyce Bracey, a member of Roberts Memorial United Methodist Church Bazaar Committee. The, the committee is planning a wonderful spiritual family and friends day program on April the 25th at noon. The theme, keeping faith or times such as these, was found to be fitting considering the events of the past year. We pray that you will join us for readings of select scriptures, music, and sermon delivered by a special guest speaker. Robert's Memorial would like to thank you in advance and pray that the Lord will allow all of our family and friends to be in attendance. God bless. For all those celebrating birthdays in March, we wish you a happy and pleasant birthday. Please read your newsletter for continued updates. 
And we are saddened to announce the passing of Brother Wally Neal. Many of you knew Brother Neal, and I hope you will extend your personal condolences to the family. May God bless you, and those are the morning announcements. Good morning, church. We will now have the call to worship. If you listen long enough, we hear all creation say, God's, God's ways are more precious than gold. We hear all creation declare, God's ways are sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. Now open your hearts and pray with all of creation. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Thank you. 
spirit moves through the place. I hear our pastor singing, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. covenant of the law to guide us and help us live with our neighbors in love. When we break God's law, we leave our neighbors hurt and bruised. God's law is a gift to us, showing us how to keep our part of the covenant. Even through old pain and wounds, may we embrace the new life that Christ can bring. Friends, may the God of the law Guide us in living lives that keep the covenant of love. May Christ's forgiveness grant us new life, even when we break God's law. May the Holy Spirit of conviction lead us to confession and renewal. May we respond in love to the God of covenant and change. Please take a moment to offer each other signs of reconciliation and peace. May the peace of God be with you all. We'll now have a selection by our own Barry Black. Give all my service 
Sacrifices a dollar a day for 40 days, ending on Easter Sunday. So you have time. We also want to thank those of you who have supported us generously during our absence from in person worship. May God bless you and may God see that you have no need because you've given to his work here at Roberts. And remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So right now, right now, Write out that check to Roberts Memorial. Go online to Easy Tide and give your donation. If you can, give a recurring donation. If you can't do anything, just wave your hand and say, Lord, bless them. Amen? Thank you. journey to loosen our grip on our money and possessions. 
sins and live with compassion to which your son has called us. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chelsea, for that beautiful prayer. And thank you, everyone, for your generosity and for honoring your commitment to God. Our first scripture lesson comes from the book of Psalm, and we will read Psalm 19 in its entirety. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their word to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our New Testament lesson will be 1 Corinthians 1, verses 18 through 25. Then it's 1 Corinthians 1, verses 18 through 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. It is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and discernment of the discerning I will quaff. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of God for the people of God.
my heart. And I hope that is your story too. Would you bow with me please for a brief word of prayer? Lord God, our Father, Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, Holy Spirit, our guide and instructor. We come to you today to ask your blessing upon us and upon this word. May these words, Lord, be pleasing in your sight. And may they do, may they accomplish that which you've intended. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. In the name of the Christ we ask it. Amen. This word is a very familiar text. Matter of fact, you've heard it read today and you've heard it recited time and time again. But in the 14th verse of the 19th Psalm, you find these words. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. As we journey through Lent, we are called to acknowledge our issues, confess the sin which resides in us, and turn not just away from them, but to our God. God gave us the guidelines to live in harmony with God, with ourselves, and with our neighbors. But we have refused to obey those guidelines, those words. The Decalogue or the Ten Commandments, if you will, do just that. Yet we find ourselves living outside of those guidelines, which is called sin. And we don't like that word. But we don't like to think of ourselves as sinners, but we are. From the pulpit to the door, we are sinners. Not that we have committed sins, we all acknowledge that, and the Word of God declares all have sinned and come short of his glory. But more than that, we are sinners. Every one of us, you and me and all of us presently sin daily. Sometimes deliberately and at other times we kind of slide into it. You know, when we tell that little white lie or we indulge in gossiping about stuff but we only have half of the truth but we speak as if we know both sides of the story and the reality behind it. That's what I call sliding into it. We are no different than the Old Testament church Israel. Our God rescued Israel from slavery in Egypt with an awesome display of power. God brought them to the brink of the promised land and gave them instructions on how to build relationships that reflected the character of God. This was done because they were the very opposite of what God represented. Living in Egypt, they had assimilated the thought patterns of their enslavers, and this was antithetical to who God was. This means they were murderers and adulterers and liars and thieves, just like us. God heard some of them in the wilderness when their disobedient be disobedience became too much to bear. But the children had learned from the poor examples of their parents and were designed, they're destined rather, to repeat the same sins unless instructed in righteous living. After all, how can you honor your father and mother when they are not honorable? When they don't live the righteous life and therefore can't teach that life by example, the children are doomed to reject God and suffer from the same iniquity as their parents. That would be a vicious cycle and curtail what God was creating. Therefore, in grace and in love, God acts and gives the people guidelines for a new way of being, not just living. 
gives them a standard on how to live in this calling to be the people of God. Then God tells them to share this new way of living and loving with everyone they encounter. Don't fantasize it or allow it because something you check a box and say, okay, I don't cover my neighbor's wife or my neighbor's husband today, so I'm okay. The mere thought in your mind of doing so made you guilty. It's not just a rule to memorize and keep yourself in check. It's a way of living in harmony with God, yourself, and your neighbor. It's the way of the beloved community being in harmony with God and living out his calling to be a unique people set apart for God. But they fail miserably, repeatedly, just like us. But the grace of God is still present in the life of Israel and God will not give up on them. And that same grace is active today. Fast forward to the psalmist and hear his words. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise and simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. You see, God is active in his life and is causing him to reflect and to teach those around them. And what does he teach? First, he says, be revived by the law of God. Allow the spirit within the law to cleanse and energize your soul for the work set before you. We can't do the work assigned by God unless the spirit cleanses us and sets us on God's path, not our path. We want to be the captain of our ship, the master of our destiny, however you want to frame it. We don't want God directing us, telling us what to do because we think we might miss out on something. Or we have the foolish notion that our way is better than God's way. After all, we have free will, which means we can do whatever we desire. While that is true about free will, do remember, Jeremiah tells us the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately corrupt. Who can understand it? Only God can see and understand our heart. On our own, we will create a mess for ourselves and those around us. We can't help ourselves. Sin is so pervasive that it won't allow us to be an instrument of God unless God has revived us. But secondly, the psalmist says, the decrees of the Lord make the wise simple. When we want to be wise in the eyes of God, we will allow the word to become a part of us. We will allow it to get into our mind and soul to teach and correct us on the ways of God. When we do that, a change begins to happen inside Gradually at first, but with further applications and intentionality of purpose, it will deepen our resolve to become more and more like what God desires us to be. In the words of an old gospel song, that law will change my mind so I can think right, change my walk so I can walk right, change my heart even so I can love right. It's what Jesus means when he says, for whoever would save his life, will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. It's stepping into the life of the spirit of where God is calling us to be one with God, one with ourselves and with our neighbors. Of course, it's a process, but it begins with allowing the law of God to permeate our very being bit by bit, day by day, week by week, Incident by incident. Finally, as become, become, rather, in tune with the law of God. And that law becomes in tune with us. The words which flow from our lips will be in line with the Spirit of God. Our meditations become pleasing and acceptable to God, and we can be the instrument God wants to use. Now, of course, our vessel is made of flesh and blood, so we will not be perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. But we can be vessels of honor to be used by God any time and anywhere. 
That will make our hearts rejoice. That will enlighten our eyes. That will enable us to fully embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, we have been taught to check the boxes and we'll be all right. Uh, what do you mean, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked that. You see, it's box one. Because I know how to check boxes, you know. Box one says, join the church and ask God to forgive you every time you sin. Check the box. But that's not good enough. That's a recipe for disappointment and a path that leads you straight to hell. God requires more. Or we check box two. Get active in the church and support it and do whatever you want to do. Just make sure that you perform the ritual of communion and it will be all right. Wrong answer. The children of Israel were perfect in following rituals but, rituals, but Jesus told them that was not enough. They were violating the spirit of God's law. And we do the same thing. And Jesus says it's not good enough. Lent reminds us to draw nigh unto God, and God will draw nigh unto us. Lent shows us that to draw nigh unto God is like coming in close with a flaming fire which allows it to purge us of our sin and to open us up to the newness available in Christ. It's not just for preachers. It's for everyone, young and old, and all those in between. Beloved, it's for you and me. And you, and you, and even you. God is calling us out and telling us to stop being hypocrites and be the church that God sent Jesus to claim for the salvation of the world. It's too late in the game to be playing church. The devil comes to church and plays church. The devil inflicts the weak with thoughts of deprivation and dishonesty and deceit, but that's not what God calls us to be. God calls us to be true speakers. God calls us to be good workers. God calls us to be a loving community. God calls us to be a reflection of God. And brothers and sisters, when we're not doing that, it's not enough. And Lent reminds us that this is a time set aside as we approach Easter, as we approach the high holy day in the church calendar to get right with God. Now, some of you are standing there looking at me. Well, preacher, what do you want me to do? And I'm so glad that you asked that question because it's real simple. And it's difficult at the same time. You see, the psalmist says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And how can that happen unless you've got that word buried deep inside of you? How can your meditation be acceptable unto God if you, unless you're trying to be like the one Christ called you to be. Think about it. How long have you been going to church? And how long have you been living in defeat? How long have you been participating in the activities of the church but really have no joy? Don't you know joy comes from living the word and being in the word? and reflecting that word in your actions and attitudes? Don't you know that Jesus wants us to have life and that more abundantly and that life comes from a life serving him? Think about it. If all of your singing and serving and planning and scheming to get ahead in the church, to be a power base in the church, to be liked by everyone in the church. And that has not brought you satisfaction. Don't you think it's time to try something different? You can do this. 
God will enable you to do this. But I found out that one who's not a warning is not about reciting words. You know, that's a good place to start. Yes, I, I want you to invite Jesus into your heart today. I want you to invite him into this day. But that's like base level, that's ground level. That's like kindergarten. What I want you to do is step into the life that Christ has for you. Allow him to cleanse you, to renew you, to revitalize you, to make you brand new. Because if you don't do that, brothers and sisters, you're just playing a game with yourself. Because God knows us. Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful in all ways. But Jesus wants to give you a new heart. One dedicated to living for him and with him. One that allows you to love yourself, to forgive yourself, to put all that mess behind you. Don't you know God forgave you? When are you going to forgive yourself? So you're divorced, so what? What are you now? Are you trying to walk the walk? Have you even tried to walk that walk? Have you tried to love yourself like God loves you? Well, start today. Wherever you are, Whoever you are, remind yourself that God loves you just as you are. Whether you're single or married, divorced or living with someone, whether you're gay or straight, God loves you. And God wants you to live that life. What life? The one that God is calling you into. One of unselfishness, one of generosity, one of compassion, one of care for yourself, for your family, and for your neighbor. If one person in the community is straddling the fence, pretending that the whole community is at risk, God doesn't just want to save you. God wants to save all of us from ourselves. Won't you try it today? Why don't you try it today? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. My Lord
as we come to a time of prayer. I hope that you will bow in your heart wherever you are and pray with me. If you see the names in the bulletin on the prayer list, call them out in your home, on the job, or in your car, or wherever you happen to be today. And please remember the family of Brother Wally Neal, long time member of Roberts. Brother Neal has gone home to get his reward. Remember the family of Sister Karen Colbert. Remember Sister Janie Stevens and her family. Remember Sister Ella Courtney and her family. And yes, Lord, it's us, it's me, it's you standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, not my brother or my sister. But it's me, oh Lord. But Lord, I'm just coming to you today with a heart that's lightened, but a mind that's concerned about this flock that, that you've given me to care for. Lord, I, I want to be faithful. Lord, I want to get to heaven. And I want to see some of them there with me. But Lord, that's not my call. That's your call. But today, Father, we are remembering those who are burdened. There are millions across the nation who lost their jobs and some of them permanently. There are many who have died from this COVID-19 and virus, and now there's a vaccine on the market. Lord, we pray that that vaccine is available to all of your children, not just here in America, not just the wealthy, but to all of your children. Right now, Lord, our hearts are turned toward those in our midst who are hurting. Some of them have gone, been going through for quite some time. Lord, I ask them to hold on. Hold on till their change comes. Hold on till you move in their midst. Hold on to the Holy Spirit lighten on them. For Lord, we are told that this journey would not be easy. That we would have some ups and downs. That some days there'd be bitter pills of fall. That people would talk about us. But that's all right, Lord. Help us to gird up our loins, Lord. Help us to strap on the breastplate of righteousness. Help us to shield ourselves by your word, Lord. But more important than all of that, Lord, help us to live like you have done something with us. That you have given us a new name. And whatever we used to be called, Lord, we, we're no longer that. Some of us used to be liars, and some of us used to be backstabbers, some of us used to be hateful, but now, Lord, we are the beloved. Help us to live in that walk, Lord. That your word might go out from our example, 
that people might look upon us and say, what's wrong with them? In spite of all the hell they're going through, they still have a smile on their face. They know they've got cancer. They're almost on the brink of death, but there's still joy in their life. Give us that spirit, Lord. Your Holy Spirit. That lets us know that death is only a doorway. But on the other side, I've got a new home. Over in glory. And the songwriter says, It's mine, mine, mine. Thank you, Jesus. Let our hearts be all right, Lord. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts, Lord, be acceptable unto you because we're trying to live a life worthy of this eternal life that you've given us. And we'll be careful, Lord. Oh, so careful. To give you the praise. To give you the honor. Because it's not about us. But it's about you. In the name of Christ.
today but forever. In the name of Christ.